Hi, everybody. This is Hondo. I am Hondo Carpenter. I am your Sports Illustrated beat writer covering the Las Vegas Raiders and the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. It is really good to be with you today. This is my training camp report number six. Um, sixth reported camp. We are looking forward to Tuesday with the um, addition of players going to be in pads. That's going to be a big deal. Now, coming up on Monday in camp, We'll obviously have practice. We're going to talk to players, but I'm really looking forward to talking to Luke Getze. Of course, we'll have the video and the audio and all of that for you. Nobody covers the Raiders more thorough for you than us, and uh, we're going to continue to pop it out. We're doing 15 to 20 pieces of content every single day for you 100% free, doing our very best to take you inside camp to let you know what's going on, what's happening All of that. So a lot of great things happening there, excuse me, from a camp perspective. Um, Yesterday we broke down, it was a recap of the defense, excuse me, of the offense. And then what we're looking ahead to this coming week, week two of camp. Today I'm going to follow those those guidelines pretty much the same as well. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about the defense And what am I looking for next week? And there's a lot. Now, the defense, in my opinion, is the best defense in all of the National Football League. So the expectations are immensely higher for them. AP has made it very clear. You want a dominating defense, dominating. And then you also want an offense that is is risk averse. You know, don't take risks. You don't have to trust your defense. So let's talk about a couple of things that stood out. This Raider defense dominated the end of last year on the field, dominated OTAs in many camps in the first week of camp. Now, I will say I believe the offense looked better the first week of camp than they did during OTAs in mini camp. 100% will tell you that. But I want to watch with this defense – That chip, I want to watch it back. The pads come on Tuesday. I think, because the Raiders have accumulated a bunch of competitive guys, I want to watch the level of competition. I once heard this said, and I apologize that I don't remember who told me this. For some reason, I believe it was Bobby Bowden, but it could have been Lou Holtz. In fact, the more, or it may have been Jim Trestle now that I think about it. Maybe it was Jim Tressel, but one of those three men told me one time that you wanted practice to be so competitive, so difficult, that guys looked forward to the game because you knew the guys we're playing on Saturday aren't as good as the guys I've been playing all week. And that's a mentality. So the pads are going to come on. Now, this Raider team saw in week one of training camp an offense that attacked them. Luke gets and and his guys went after the Raider defense and the Raiders were better. The D the defense was, but the offense still did some things really right. Really, really right. Um, Let's start right in the, uh, uh, the obvious. We're talking about the defense. I want to watch Tyree Wilson close. He's had a phenomenal offseason. Phenomenal. Um, I want to see, does he pick up now that he's 100%? I want to watch those inside moves. I want to watch how he moves on his feet. I think that's going to be fascinating to watch. Fascinating to watch. Malcolm Kuntz. Uh, he, Let me just say something. All offseason, he has looked like the guy who ended last year. So I have zero concerns that he won't be, but I want to watch. Is the maturation? He was really good last year. Does he take another step? No. I'm going to tell you a guy that I like personally. I've said this, and he's a guy that I know that I've been high on, and I know guys in the organization have. But a guy who at times has been a little disappointing is Janarius Robinson, the defensive end. He has every physical feature that God gives. 
I mean, height, speed, strength, size. He's got it all. He's got it all. And if he can keep engaged, and if he can 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 play within the body that he has and the talent that he can do it. <clears throat> But the the what's going to make or break Janarius Robinson with this with his Raiders future is going to be consistency. He has to be consistent. And I'm going to say something to you, the UDFA, <clears throat> and you may say, "Wow, Hondo, you you have a lot of expectations for him as a UDFA." Yep, I do, because he's very talented. The old the old Bible verse: "To whom much is given, much is expected." Janarius Robinson is a young man that has, when you just see him, it screams. Max Crosby said it like five star when I asked Max about it. He screams first round draft pick. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't. He underperformed in college to the talent that he has. That's why he limped into the NFL, showed some flashes last year for the Raiders. But I think this young man can be a quality player and starter. Those are my expectations of him. <clears throat> I think that's the expectations of others. But he has to embrace that. And it's going to be consistency. I'm going to watch him very close. Because right now, you know, if you really look at it, you got Malcolm and you got Max. You got Tyree who can slide out to a D a D E position, but he's also an interior guy. So it's going to be interesting watching J Rob. And I want to say it right up front. They believe that he can do it. I believe that he can do it. And he showed us on tape he can do it, but he has to do it consistently. And I don't think it's being rude. I don't think it's being unfair. My job is a reporter. I'm not making it personal. I like the young man. He didn't have the week I was hoping for him to have last week. And that was disappointing for me. It, I would say right now, <clears throat> of all the defense, that was that that, that was probably the most disappointing because of my expectations. Let's keep going. Tommy freaking Eichenberg. The powerful rookie linebacker out of Ohio State has looked like a star. But now the pads come on. We know what he did at Ohio State. <clears throat> this ain't Ohio State. Now, you look at Dylan Labe, who comes from New Hampshire. <clears throat> it ain't New Hampshire. So we have every reason to believe that Tommy is going to continue to be Tommy. Again, he has demonstrated, I think there's been, well, I don't think, I know, he has surprised some people with his vision. I believe that they thought he was good. I'm not sure that they they knew he would. Well, I'm not, I say I'm not sure. I am sure. I think that they have been pleasantly surprised at his vision. His He just sees so wide. I had somebody tell me on Saturday, that it's like he watches life through a wide-angle lens. Some guys, they're like a horse of blinders. Tommy Eichenberg, wide-angle lens. He just sees it. He just sees it. He, he has a God-given gift of football vision. And, man, isn't that what you want at linebacker? Now, who's he going to push for playing time? He's not going to mess with Robert Spillane. If you're thinking that, just get rid of it. Get that out of your head. Obviously, when Robert needs a blow, he can come in and play. <clears throat> but does he have the ability to push on the outside? Or if the Raiders are going with a two linebacker, two mic set, let's say they're in a three down lineman, Malcolm, Max, Butler, Jink, Tyree, whatever. <clears throat> or let's say they're in a four. Guys, okay, does he have a ability to play a Sam or a Will? I'm sorry, a Sam linebacker is a strong side outside linebacker. A, a Will is a weak side. <clears throat> Can he be a, a Will <clears throat> or a Sam? Or is he purely only a Mike? I 
don't know this. I think he's going to get a chance to show he can be a, a, a Will or a Sam. Well, that's foolish. I know he's going to get that. I just don't know if he can do it. I, I, I And it's not because I question his talent. It's like when you move a guy from corner to safety. You, you don't really know. You think, yeah, he's got all the intangibles. Yeah, I think he can do it. But you don't know. So I'm going to be watching Tommy freaking Eichenberg. I mean, I'm going to be. <laughs> it's going to be one like when my wife comes out dressed up, ready to go somewhere. I'm like, Boom! my total vision. Luckily, she's not here in Costa Mesa with me. So my total vision, the Tommy Eichenberg. Boom! Um, I'll be watching him really close. Another guy who had a great week at camp. Now, Eichenberg had a great, <clears throat> great first week at camp. Great. Not good. Great. Another guy that had a really, really good one. I don't know that I would call it great, but man, I'd call it really good right on that cusp of great was to Cameron Richardson. No, you know what? I would, I would call it great. I mean, he's already in the top twos. He's running with the ones and the twos, ones and the twos. And you heard me correct. Ones, twos, uno, and dos. <clears throat> That's one and two in Spanish, if you didn't know that. Sorry, I'm just bringing all that. But anyways, so let's talk about DeCamerian Richardson. This is a guy, he's really, really long. I mean, he's just long. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let me look. I want to <clears throat> look at something real quick, if you don't mind, because uh, I want to be as accurate as I can be. <clears throat> Excuse me. But DeCarian Richardson, all right, I don't see it. Oh, here we go. 6'2", 188. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm almost certain his, I would have guessed his arm length at 6'3", or 6'4", talking about his, 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 his reach. He just has such long, and he's so fast. I mean, I'm telling y'all, you got J.B. Jacorian Bennett and DeCamerian Richardson with speed to burn. Speed to burn. Man, I'm just telling you. And so he's really emerged. I think if I had to pick the corners today, <clears throat> you're looking at Hobbs, Bennett, and Jones. Think about that. If that's if that stays according to Hole, and if you if you're not a card player, you won't know what Hole is. But uh, if it if that stays true to Hole, which is the expectation, you got Hobbs who's ready for a new deal, Jack Jones who's got two years left. Uh, if you count this year, one year after this year, and then you got JB who will have two years left after this year. What a young with a Decamerian Richardson, and you got Face, who's Brandon Face on, and MJ Devonshire is a developmental guy. There's a lot of talent in that Raider. Listen, it is totally fair to mention that the Raiders' defensive backfield is very, very young. That is totally fair. But that DCAM and JB, they're coming now. I want to watch. Not, I'm not so much worried about this with JB, uh, but DeCamerian's never done it in the NFL. I'm going to watch him with his pads on. <clears throat> I want to do, is he just as fluid? It's one thing, and I know he played at the SEC, so I'm going to give him all the credit in the world. But he is very fluid. As a matter of fact, his fluidity, every time I take notes on him, almost the first word I write every time is fluidity. And I love the fluidity of his body. It just moves naturally. Um, I want to watch him with pads and how he adjusts to the physicality now of receivers. We always talk about the physicality of defensive backs in the NFL and that's fair and it's 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 germane that's what we talked about with Dylan Labe 
But when you get some of these corners now, and let me tell you what Antonio Pierce wants. He wants those corners that are going to – I mean, he, he wants physical, and so does Patrick Graham. They want the physical corners that are going to beat you up. Oh, yeah, let's go, brother. Let's go, brother. Let's get it on. Bring it on. They want that. They covet it. They hunger for it. They desire us of it. And so that's a big deal. That's a very, very, very big deal. To Cameron Richardson now, and I mentioned this too, I think on Thursday, he, he got a little bit of nasty in him now. Good kid. But he got a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, he just got a little bit of something, something, a little bit of spunk in him. I like that kid. I like him a lot. And I like that, you know, I watched a drill last week with him where he, he got beat. He goes right back in the line, man. He wants that next rep. He doesn't care if it's Jacoby. He doesn't care if it's if it's Devonte. Oh, Trey Tucker and his speed. Yeah, hold my Gatorade. <laughs> so again, I'm going to be watching to Cameron. I'll give you another guy I'm going to be watching closely though, because he he shows flashes. Great kid, Isaiah Paloma. Great kid, super great kid. He, last year, they wanted him to just take that step. And I think he had a better last year. But he's a guy now, I just, call me a fool. You wouldn't be the first one. I just see some superstar in that kid, Isaiah Palomon. I do. He's just a lunch pail kid. Great work ethic. Um, hard worker. Hard worker. It is not uncommon to watch him after a rep talk to Devante or talk to a guy. Hey, what do you think? What are you seeing? Very impressive. I, I love watching Isaiah with Marcus Epps. I mean, Marcus Epps is an all pro wide receiver. I mean, uh, safety. It was ridiculous he wasn't on there last year. I can't believe the lack of respect he gets from Raider Nation, but that's another story. That guy played out of his mind last year. Multiple of those defensive touchdowns they got last year, he was putting guys in the right position. He is a freak of nature. Marcus Epps may have one of the highest football IQs I've ever seen. His ability pre-snap is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. His, his pre-snap read is just like, Wow. I love to go back when I watch film, and I'll give you a little hint here in case you're a film watcher like me. Go back and look at pre-snap and watch him point things out and then watch how the play. Now, I'm not a big Tony Romo fan. I don't dislike him. I'm just not a big Tony Romo fan. I, 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 everybody I know who knows him says he's a good guy. I just, listening to him, Call game sometimes can be a little annoying to me. Again, great man. I'm not attacking his integrity. But one thing I do love about Tony Romo, and he got in trouble for this early, was he was calling out plays before they ever happened. Tony Romo is an exceptional, exceptional at the pre-snap read. Um, I was told by somebody who uh, is who has won Super Bowls in the NFL um, extremely, extremely well known, but I don't have his permission to tell you who this is from, or I would tell you, but he told me one time that of all the quarterbacks and this guy worked with some of the very best. He told me that Tony Romo's greatest strength was the pre-snap read that nobody that he had ever been around in the NFL had a pre-snap read like Tony Romo. Okay. I'm putting Marcus Epps in that category. Marcus Epps, um, Elon Musk developed this new link that people are implanting in their mind to help them. Um, and Marcus Epps plays like he's got them, like he's got a computer. Blah, 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 blah. It's nuts. Robert Spillane is, is very close. Robert Spillane's a superstar. He's an all pro. Ridiculous that he wasn't. But Marcus Epps just sees the entire field 
I literally think he can be watching the play guys in position and tell some guy in the 400 level, hey, this lady didn't get her pack of mustard for her pretzel. <laughs> That's just the kind of guy that he is. So I want to watch Isaiah Palomao and does he continue to do that? And I want to see him now make those big plays all the time. Okay, another guy I'm going to watch, Trey Taylor. You know, I'm, I'm a buyer on Trey Taylor. I like that young man. I like him. I like him a lot. You put on the film of him. Did he play the level of competition of guys from the Big Ten or the SEC? No. But he still played at a very good level. Wasn't a bad level. And he's, and he's just... He's really smart. I'm I want to watch him because he's very physical. So I want to watch him especially. I'm going to keep a ton of eyes on him watching how he moves and how he catches on. Because pads are going to be big for Trey Taylor. Trey Taylor is one of those guys that you know, there are some guys that look great in what I in what I um you may remember. Former Carolina Panther wide receiver Steve Smith, he calls it the underwear Olympics, which is when you're playing football with no pads. Um, that's when he calls preseason or training camp before pads the underwear Olympics. I think that's hilarious. Um, but Trey Taylor is a guy that looks his best in pads. You can't judge him out of pads. He's a physical player. Um, I heard this one time, and I thought this was brilliant analysis. Um, I was friends with a guy who played with Troy Polamalu. And I asked him one time about Trey. I said, you know, what made him one of the greatest safeties of all time? And he said, you wouldn't know it without pads. But when pads came on, it was very visible. I heard the same thing about Ronnie Lott. You know, he played safety, then turned a corner. That he was a guy that absolutely, well, you know, he looked okay in pads. I mean, outside of pads, but you put pads on and you're like, Boop! what is going on there? Um, that's, that's Trey Taylor. So I'm going to be watching him close. So hopefully next week I'll be talking a lot about Trey Taylor and what he has done to take that next step. That's going to be big for him. I had a lot of people ask me about Jank, John Jenkins and Adam Butler. They're a lot like I said yesterday with um, A.J. Cole and Devontae Adams. You know what you're going to get? Putting them out of my mind, not watching. Is You know what you're going to get from those guys. They're seasoned veterans. That right now, it does not matter. It's a lot like Colton Miller. Matthew Butler. This is a young man, money year. And... He's got to start fast. And I am going to have zeroed in vision on him. Zeroed in. I'm going to be watching him closely. I want to see how he uh, – I heard a player say this once, and I'm trying to remember what player it was that told me this. Hang on. I may I may have it right here. Um. It was an offensive lineman. Uh, oh, yeah. Rick DeMulling. You remember Rick DeMulling? He was Peyton Manning's lineman in Indianapolis. What a great guy. I love Rick. And Rick told me one time that the best players embrace the suck. And uh, they just embrace the suck. And meaning, you know, just the constant pounding of training camp. And they embrace it. And they may have another offensive lineman that you may know, who I'm very good friends with, Brock Gutierrez. Hi, Brock and his wife, Wally. Um, but Brock talked this when I mentioned to him, because I was with him and Rick at the same time, I don't remember what we were doing. I think we were eating, but we were doing something. And when Rick brought up Embrace the Suck, and I remember uh, Brock laughing and saying, it's totally true. 
you have to embrace the suck. And I want to watch Matthew Butler just get out there and be consistent. I'm rooting for the young man. I'm rooting for him. I want him to do well. I'm not rooting against him. But he's got to go out. Next week's going to be so big for him. So incredibly big for him. It's going to be a very, very big week. And then uh, MJ Devonshire. He's a rook. Seventh round guy. You may remember, I told you this before. You When you expect your first five round guys to make the team. And, it, and then you expect your sixth and seventh to at least make the practice squad. If they make the, the, the roster, great. But you at least expect the, the, the practice squad. I think MJ has a chance to make the roster. And if he does, coming from the seventh round, that'll be a big deal. But I want to watch him in pads. And um, I don't think he had a bad rookie week at all. I, I would I would say that, he, you know, I, I thought it was good. Um, but he's one of those guys, because of where he was picked in the seventh round, he's going to have to start shining now. And I'm going to watch him. I'm going to watch him close. And so I'm looking forward to that. So as pads come on Tuesday, what you're really looking for is that defense. And, and AP wants it. Physicality. Pick up where you left off. All right, you have been a bunch of cage dogs since the season ended. You've been a bunch of cage dogs. Now it's time to go eat. Go eat. And that's what you're looking for next week in camp. I'm so excited. I'm I'm, I'm just ready to go. Let's go. It, uh, I mean, I'm blessed that I get to watch football every day from the sidelines and cover an iconic franchise like the Las Vegas Raiders for the best fans and all the National Football League Raider Nation. So thank you for the privilege. Um, again, we're bringing you 15 to 20 pieces of content today. I hope you're enjoying it. The reports are very clear when we get them every day that you guys are reading, watching, and enjoying. I just ask you something. My company, SI, keeps it all free. None of it's behind a paywall. So do me a favor. Please share it. Like it and share it. I ask you to do that for me, would you? Thanks, everybody. We appreciate you. And uh, let's go. Football time. It's here. It just feels like Christmas, doesn't it? Weather's great. And SoCal, Orange County here in Costa Mesa, it's a great day for football. See you all tomorrow.